Member Stevens? Present. Council Member Williams? Here. The first item on the agenda is council comments. Does anybody have any comments? Thank you, Council Member Williams. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate our uh, colleague, uh, Council Member Austin Lane, for successfully completing a marathon run. I hope you'll uh, tell us a little about that and uh, how, what the experience is like. It was, it was, it was tough, but it was a great experience. Thank you for asking. And um, I finished in five and a half hours. It was in Miami, Florida, and I raised $3,000 for Whitman Walker Clinic here in D.C. Fantastic. So, I waited at home for the phone call. I thought you might need help getting here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the Montgomery County Community Action Agency is uh, offering uh, volunteer assistance in preparing tax returns this year uh, for low and moderate income residents of Montgomery County. Anyone who would like this free assistance can contact Karen Fisher at 301-565-7451 to schedule an appointment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Anybody have any additional agenda items? I don't think we have any minutes to adopt. Okay. Uh, public comment period. If anybody would like to uh, speak on any item not on our regular meeting agenda, uh, so there would be anything on the work session or anything not on the agenda at all, if you could come to the microphone and uh, give us your name and uh, keep your comments brief. Thanks. I heard three minutes is the optimum time and there'll be less than three minutes. So my name is Erwin Charles Cohen. I provided you with gray folders. This is a matter that pertains to Montgomery County. I know you'll have a busy schedule with Tacoma Park issues, but if you just bear with me. Um, in our county seat, we have a brand new Montgomery County Library, and uh, County Executive Legate is getting involved now in considering the naming of that uh, new uh, library. And uh, there is a grassroots initiative that is spreading across Montgomery County where we're trying to encourage our county executive to honor the seven fallen Montgomery County residents who have who served and lost their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the materials that I provided, you see their names. Our vision of what we would like is in the photographic material that I have provided you with pictures, both the outer facade and the inner memorial wall bearing their names. It turns out that in the Gazette this last week, uh, one of the soldiers um, uh, received a silver star. And um, what's so appropriate about the recommendation to have our you know, new library as a um, memorial is that our county seat already provides memorials for fa fallen firefighters, for the victims of 9-11, for the tragedy of the sniper incident, the tragedies of the sniper incident. So it's very consistent to honor our fallen neighbors throughout Montgomery County with this particular naming. And um, uh, your colleagues in the city of Rockville that, like yourselves, this is a county issue, but they have weighed in so that the county knows what their feelings are. And that's why I'm here tonight, because I think it's important, even though it's a county decision made by our county executive, I think your view is very important as uh, sort of the pulse of Tacoma Park in, uh, in recognizing how important the naming of this democratic institution is, because when you think about a library, it's one of our premier democratic institutions, and that library really belongs to our fallen soldiers. They fought, they gave their lives for those dem that democratic institution. And um, with that, I will just uh, conclude and say if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You mentioned that the uh, Rockville City Council has taken a position on this request. Yes. What was their position? They, they passed a resolution, as I'm proposing, that you might consider unanimously supporting and encouraging Montgomery County to name the library, the Montgomery, the uh, Rockville Memorial Library, uh, in memory of those who served and gave their lives 
uh, from Montgomery County in Iraq and uh, uh, Afghanistan. And that, that same motion is the one that I've included in your, uh, in your cover letter there that I would hope that you would uh, you'd consider. It's, it's one of those acts of the heart. And they are, so I'd say take off your political hats and put on the, the hats of compassion because this is just something, it's, it's so many of us, we just feel it's the right thing for us to do. I thank you. Any further uh, questions or comments? Do you know of any other memorials in the county to uh, our soldiers who died in Iraq and Afghanistan? I, I'm so, I know of none. I know of none. This, uh, as far as I know, this is the first time uh, that these seven soldiers um, would be, uh, their memory would be honored um, by virtue of having that library named in them as a memorial to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Cohen. I appreciate also uh, your call to me about this issue. Um, the, uh, I will be happy to consult with my colleagues um, and, you know, if they wish, put it on the agenda for a future meeting. Okay. The, the hearing, there will be a public hearing held by the county sometime towards uh, the 19th or 20th of this month. So okay. I would encourage you so that your view would be available to them if you could add on it, you know, according to what your needs are and agenda, but it would be appropriate to try to do it as soon so your input could be you know, provided. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else. Um, we will move on to the, um, did you adopt the minutes already? There weren't any. No minutes. I thought we were going to get some minutes. Um, the city manager's comments. Um, I'll defer any comments about the community center um, since that is a scheduled agenda item. Just a few things I did want to make some brief announcements on. It's just a reminder for all Ward 5 residents that there is a special election tomorrow to um, fill that ward council seat. Uh, the city council will have a special meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday evening to certify the election results. Um, one other item I just wanted to mention to the council regarding tax duplication. Um, I attended a meeting on Friday that was hosted by Montgomery County's new chief administrative officer, uh, Tim Firestein. Uh, during that meeting, he did mention that the county um, was moving forward with approaching the municipalities about forming a committee. Um, my understanding and con conversation with Paul Folkers today, who is one of the assistant CAOs, um, is that a letter would probably be sent to um, the Montgomery County chapter of MML basically asking for appointees to that committee. And at least the stated goal at this time was to try to work through the issues so that any change in formulas would be applicable for the FY09 fiscal year. Um, the council may have also received a letter that I sent to Mr. Firestein uh, relative to Tacoma Park's tax duplication payment for police services. That is obviously a special um, arrangement between the city and Montgomery County. Um, I think that issue was probably best handled separate from the general issues. Uh, Mr. Fokers did call me about that today and given county's budget schedule, we would probably be looking um, at the same issue in terms of trying to execute a new memor of un memorandum of understanding between the parties for FY09. One of the things that I mentioned to Mr. Fokers that does need to be resolved is what is the county's position relative to the city's payment for FY08. As uh, the council may recall, this was an issue about a year ago. Um, given that all the changes that were coming in the county, the parties agreed to basically leave the amount of the payment the same. I do think that issue needs to be worked out. And as I advise Mr. Folkers, if there is any intention on the part of the county to deviate from that arrangement while negotiations are pending, that we needed to know that and talk about that, that that would be unacceptable to the city. Um, so he was going to run that up the pipeline and get back to me about that. Um, the last issue uh, relative to tax duplication that Mr. Folkers and I um, had discussed some time ago, um, and I think now with our community center up and running, I wanted to revisit with him, has to do with a possible rebate for senior programming. Uh, there are some municipalities that do receive that. When Mr. Folkers and I first talked about this, um, our center was still under construction and we really did not have any track record that we could share. Um, I'm in the process of working with the staff to gather some data about the senior programming that the city does offer in this facility 
and we'll be talking to Mr. Fokers to explore the possibility of the city getting a rebate for that area, which would be something new. Gary? Um, thank you, Ms. Matthews, for uh, following up on that with the senior programs that the Recreation Department puts on. But I also, uh, it raises the question, what about the youth programs that we do that uh, would normally be uh, services provided by the county? Is that not an, uh, another opportunity for uh, negotiation in the rebates? I, I certainly think it is, Councilmember Siemens. That is not something that any of the municipalities currently receive. I think it would probably be an issue worth exploring in terms of the broader um, discussions with the county in terms of revenue issues in general. Um, I think as an initial measure, we probably would have an easier time making a case for the senior rebate since that is a, pro a program that's already in effect. Um, I believe the county offers that to three separate municipalities, so that might be an easier fight to fight immediately with the hopes of getting some revenue for FY08, but I certainly agree with you it's something worth exploring. Right. I understand it's an easier fight to fight, but uh, our uh, county neighbors who live in uh, the Long Branch area and enjoy the services of the Long Branch Community Center uh, would not be able to enjoy those same services if we were to uh, shut down our programs and have all of our residents using that facility also. So I think we have a, a strong case uh, that we shouldn't wait too long to explore. I'd certainly be happy to explore that with Mr. Folker sooner rather than later. Thank you. Bruce? And if I can just mention something uh, pertaining to the uh, rebate discussions. Um, I had a interesting discussion with one of the Montgomery County delegates on Saturday uh, and was getting briefed on a on a bill that is going forward in Annapolis to uh, try and deal with uh, some peculiarities that Rockville and Gaithersburg have on an issue that doesn't affect us. Uh, but we were discussing how that ties in with the whole rebate discussion and how uh, it, it also gets at some of the uh, parks and recreation issues where the, the rebate, where our rebate from the county isn't necessarily what it should be and how that might tie into what's going on in Annapolis. So I'd be happy to provide more details on the, on those discussions. And, so, and some of that is going to be coming up pretty quickly. And the, the interesting twist is that uh, the uh, bill will probably go forward from the uh, Montgomery County delegation, uh, even though it's being opposed by Park and Planning. Great. Any information you could share, Councilmember Williams, would be most appreciated. That concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Um, I'd just like to follow up on the uh, issue of the rebates also. The Montgomery County delegation of MML did have a very preliminary discussion when I brought this up some months ago. And um, their, their preliminary decision was to um, have the same group that last negotiated with the, with the county um, essentially be the basis for the negotiating group this time. And I would note that our city manager is, was a member of that group. Um, one of the things that might be interesting to explore would be to see if we can also get uh, someone from the TASB committee, perhaps to provide a different perspective on that group, um, and that might be an interesting thing to do also. So, you know, in, you know, this, this I'm sure will come up before MML, the Montgomery MML group, and, um, you know, both Bruce and I attend most of the meetings, I think, between the two of us. We've probably covered them all, um, and, you know, we will keep the council apprised as those discussions go on. Um, the other thing, if it has not been mentioned before, um, I appreciate your mentioning the special election tomorrow. I wanted to add a couple of things. One is that it is being held at Columbia Union College in Wilkerson Hall, um, which is the same place the state elections last fall were held. So for people from Ward 5, that is where people have voted before. And the other thing is the, I understand from the city clerk that the counting will actually take place in this building. Um, after the election is over, after uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, and it will, of course, be our first um, election in which instant runoff voting is used. And so it should be very interesting. Um, and the city clerk's done a great deal of work. That's why she's not here this evening. Has done a great, great deal of work in preparation. I'm sure she's over there right now doing even more work. Um, but it should be a very interesting thing to watch the counting uh, for an instant runoff race. Um, so I... It, it, it's going to be a very historic election for a number of reasons in Tacoma Park. Okay. Um, the next item, we're moving to our first regular uh, meeting agenda item, 
which is the first reading of an ordinance revising the scope of the Emergency Preparedness Committee. Hi, I'm Stacy Baker, the co-chair of the Emergency Preparedness Committee. The modifications uh, come from the committee that we propose to, to do a few things, um, to change the scope and responsibilities of the Emergency Preparedness Committee so it reflects the appropriate relations between the city and the county, um, and then to, of course, avoid duplication. And then secondly, to be a little bit clearer about the roles of the committee uh, relative to the city. Uh, we wanted to get ourselves out of the business of establishing uh, processes in the event of emergencies and having government to government relationship with the county um, and more advising the city on its appropriate ro role and command in emergencies and in having a relationship with the county. So I, I'd like to entertain questions if you have any about the changes that our committee has proposed actually of January of last year and just now being brought before you due to an oversight. Um, I very much appreciate your going to the work of, of proposing those changes, and I think they're right on point. I appreciate you doing it. Are there any other questions? I hate to be repetitive, but I appreciate your, your bringing this to us uh, just because I think it's uh, important that your role be clear that it is an advisory capacity. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like you, you must have done a really good job of explaining it. There's no question. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone else have anything they wanted to say on this? Okay. Uh, does someone want to move the ordinance? So move. Um, is there any additional council comments on the ordinance? Are there any public comments on the ordinance? All right. Seeing none, this is the first reading of the ordinance. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ordinance passes. Um, and I believe we're going to try and put the second reading on... Um, as soon as we can. Yes. So I can't I can't find it here. I, I never remember what days we end up with things, but I remember we were trying to get it on as soon as possible. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, a, the first reading of an ordinance amending um, the chapter of the code that deals with the noise control board, and this would amend the number of members of the Noise Control Board. Um, I think we've discussed this previously, and the issue is that rather than say that the board shall consist of seven members, it says five to seven, because five turns out to be enough to get a panel to hear a hearing, and since there are not seven members now, we didn't want to make the board unable to function because of a technicality, essentially, Even because five seems to be sufficient. Someone want to move this? So move. Okay, it's been moved and second. Is there any council comments on this ordinance at first reading? Any public comments on the ordinance? All right, seeing none, this is the first reading. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? This ordinance also passes at first reading. Uh, we will now move to our work session um, item, which is a discussion or a, a presentation and discussion of the um, Community Center Financial and Status Report. Thank you. Um, I did want to call it to your attention. I did find uh, one small numerical um, error in what was distributed in the packets. I believe the city clerk did distribute an amended copy. That change can be found on page two um, and is highlighted for the council's benefit. Um, kind of go through the financial report and then wanted to basically update the council on kind of where we stand with phases one and phase two. Um, and some of that will probably be discussed as I go through the financial report. Um, on the revenue side, um, as has been the case for some time, not a lot of changes in the project revenues. Um, there has been an increase from the last report I gave you, um, which was during the summer, of approximately $53,000. Um, basically, as you go through this report, what you'll note is that I have included um, a portion of the program open space funds that the council designated um, for the gym for FY07. Um, we have confirmed with the state that basically some of that allocation could be used to pay for the gym feasibility study. Um, 
And basically, all I have shown for revenues and program open space for FY07 is the portion for the gym itself, for the feasibility study. Um, there was certainly other funding that the council had approved um, pending further discussion until such time as the council chooses to move forward uh, with the gym construction project. Those funds are not being shown. The other thing relative to revenues that I did just want to mention to the council is the project revenues um, have and continue to reflect approximately $382,000 from the sale of two properties that the city um, owned on Piney, Piney Branch Road. One of those um, has already been sold. Uh, the other, which is still pending, is the residential property. The council had previously approved a sales contract in the amount of $226,500, as we have discussed previously. The sale of that property did fall through. Basically, um, the council is aware that property is not in kind of tip-top shape, if you will. Um, the person who bought it had some difficulty obtaining conventional mortgage financing. Um, we worked with him, the city attorney's office worked with him, trying to identify perhaps some other financing options, um, and he was just simply unable to, to obtain the necessary funding. Um, whether or not we actually get that amount of revenue remains to be seen. We are in the process of basically getting the property back on, you know, back up for sale. Um, but I did want to just flag that as a question mark, um, and time will tell whether or not we actually generate that, um, either more or less. Uh, in terms of expenditures, this is, as I always do, probably where I spend more time on this. Um, the amount of the city's contract uh, with James F. Knott Construction has not changed um, since the last financial report. The estimated future expenditures that are reflected in this report is sort of a function of a number of variables. It is the remaining balance that has not yet been paid on the contract value, less the amount of liquidated damages. Um, that the city has advised James F. Knott that is assessing as of October 23rd, 2005, which is when the city started occupying the building. Um, those damages total $174,000. Um, the other thing that has changed since the last report is we did execute a settlement agreement with PowerMax, which is a subcontractor to James F. Knott Construction. As part of that settlement agreement, the city agreed to make any retainage payable directly to PowerMax rather than to James F. Knott Construction. Um, as has been the case, and I'll discuss a little bit more later in this report, there are still a number of outstanding issues with James F. Knott construction. Um, for the purposes of this report, I have assumed that those issues are resolved amicably, that we do not get into any protracted litigation with James F. Knott construction. Um, should that be the case, uh, certainly there would be additional costs probably for both parties in terms of legal expenses. Um, certainly the city would need to probably have as an expert witness its construction management uh, consultant. It should be noted that at this point um, there has been no claim filed by James F. Knott Construction and there is no litigation with them. In terms of TRG Construction, who was the contractor for Phase 2, um, the current value of their contract is about $1.36 million. As the council is aware, there were a number of items that we elected to have TRG construction uh, perform that was not community center related. Uh, this included the replacement of certain sections um, of the old municipal building roof. We had them do some minor work over at Hefner. If you back those items out, which are, have not been charged to the community center project because they're not really project related expenses, the amended contract value um, it's about $1.24 million in terms of what is actually being charged to the community center fund. Uh, one thing that I did want to call to the council's attention is the contractual substantial completion date was for mid-December. Um, obviously, TRG construction um, largely got most of their project done and did it very well in terms of the actual opening of the second phase of this building. Um, they have encountered some delays in terms of getting the elevator installed. Um, so I have advised TRG construction of the city's uh, intention of assessing liquidated damages um, because they did not meet the substantial completion date. For the purposes of this report, there are no liquidated damages um, reflected for TRG construction because they're not yet done, so I don't know what that number will be. Um, and I have footnoted that so that it, you know, that it's made clear to someone. Um, we did meet with the president of TRG Construction at his request last Monday. Um, 
you know, certainly they've done a wonderful job on the project. I think he wishes that the elevator had gone somewhat differently, and uh, he is personally involved in trying to make sure it moves forward. Uh, based on the information he gave us, I, it appears that the elevator should be done by mid-February. Um, we'll obviously keep you apprised. They're kind of reaching the critical stage, and you know, certainly that's usually when things can tend to go off the rails, but uh, it does look like it's moving forward, and I do appreciate Mr. Ballard's um, you know, attention to the city as a client, uh, taking the time to personally come out here. Um, you know, did not make any excuses except the full responsibility for the delays and uh, has pledged his personal involvement until the job is done. Uh, so we certainly appreciated that. Um, as I mentioned earlier on the revenue side, um, I have included revenues for the uh, gym feasibility study. On the flip side of that, for the first time you are seeing the um, expenses to date as well as possible future expenses associated with that study reflected in the report. Um, probably the other major item that is new is basically the cost associated with the settlement agreement with PowerMax, which I mentioned a few moments ago. Uh, what has been paid to PowerMax to date was basically the um, portion which had to do with resolution of certain claims that were the subject of mediation back in May of 2006. In accordance with the agreement, as I mentioned, retainage uh, being held attributable to PowerMax uh, was to be paid directly to them rather than to James F. Knott. A portion of that retainage has been paid. Um, the city did withhold um, a portion because of items that are not yet completed. Um, Mr. Murray, who is the head of PowerMax, uh, called me earlier today um, expressing his concern that some of the items he did not feel were attributable to PowerMax and were unfairly withheld by the city. Um, I advised Mr. Murray that that was certainly not the city's intent, but if he had any indication that these items were not attributable to him, then I needed something in writing from James F. Not construction to that effect. Um, but certainly our interest was in being fair to all parties, but we needed to ensure that someone was accepting financial responsibility for those items. Under the terms of the settlement agreement, um, PowerMax waives its claims against the city, and we similarly waive any claims against him. Uh, my concern, quite frankly, is in the absence of someone accepting responsibility for those items, I think the city leaves itself open to no one being responsible. Um, so I've encouraged him to talk directly to James F. Knott Construction, and I sent an email to the vice president earlier this evening apprising him of my conversation with Mr. Murray. So hopefully we'll continue to work together to resolve any outstanding issues related to that. Included in the financial report is a current listing of the um, proposed change orders that are still pending with James F. Knott Construction. Um, because of the settlement agreement that has been executed with PowerMax, um, the value of these outstanding items has gone down, uh, but certainly there are probably more items than any of us would like that are still in pending status. Um, had some communication with James F. Knott Construction's Vice President um, in the last two weeks, basically uh, trying to ask if there was any movement on these items. Um, I think both of us are hopeful that we may be able to resolve these items amicably. Obviously, he's got to work through his subcontractors. It is not a unilateral decision on his part. But as of tonight, these items are still in pending status and remain unresolved. In some cases, the city has made a financial offer. Um, we do agree that the items fall outside the contract. We just have a disagreement about the monetary value. In other cases, we believe that some of these items were actually work covered by the base contract or there may have been issues in terms of um, the timeliness of the request. There are certain provisions in the contract that set forth deadlines by which things are to be submitted. Um, so it's sort of a combination of factors in terms of why these items are still pending. As I indicated in the report, um, the proposed amount submitted by the contractor is approximately $215,000. Based on those items that the city deems reasonable, we believe the value is probably a little bit under $38,000. Um, for the purposes of this report, uh, that margin of $177,000 is essentially reflected as almost kind of an ad back, if you will. Um, but we needed to show all the numbers. Obviously, the final resolution of those will depend on the outcome between, you know, of negotiations between the party or possibly eventual legal proceedings. I think that remains to be seen. Um, as has been unfortunately the case, I think, I feel like for every report I've ever given the council on this project, um, you know, it's very difficult because there are a number of items up in the air to figure out exactly where we'll end up. Um, based on the information that I have available today, and that's taking into account what I refer to as a potential add back on these PCOs with James F. Knott Construction, 
There would be an additional $284,000 that would need to be appropriated from the general fund for the project. As I mentioned earlier this evening, that figure does not reflect the payment of liquidated damages by TRG Construction once they achieve substantial completion and we can determine what the amount of those liquidated damages are. That figure would actually go down. But at this point, I don't know what the number is for me to put anything in. It would just be kind of a moving target. So kind of in a nutshell, I think that's sort of the financial picture. In terms of the funding shortfall, if you will, if you were to go back to the report that I gave you this summer, you might note that that is approximately $58,000 more. For the most part, that's a function of two things. One is the settlement agreement with PowerMax, which was to resolve some of the proposed change orders. As has been the case, we were successful in getting those resolved at less than what the subcontractor had requested and certainly getting those issues resolved for all parties basically kind of ceased our bleeding out, if you will, in legal fees to continue debating them back and forth. The other thing that is obviously reflected in the report are the gym feasibility costs, but most of those were offset by a revenue in terms of the program open space funds. I guess before I move on just to kind of talking about some of the actual work yet to be done, are there any questions just about the financial aspect of this? Go ahead, Colleen. Not particularly a financial question, but it says here James F. Knott Construction has requested an extension of the contract completion date to which the city has not agreed. I thought they were done other than arguing about these little things. Let me explain a little bit further. It's a good question, Councilmember Clay. The contract completion date is essentially the date by which James F. Knott was obligated by contract to finish. The relevance of that is it has to do with when liquidated damages are assessed. Some of the items that are in pending status basically had days associated with them. So if we were to grant that or if we felt that request was reasonable, it would have shifted the date on which liquidated damages would be assessable. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, they don't have anything left to do, though. That's probably the next subject of discussion. That's the punch list items because they do have things left to do. Terry? Thank you, Mayor Porter. And maybe I should wait for the punch list items. But the question I have is for the storm sewer at the back corner of the library. Is that a good segue to the punch list? It's a good segue unless there's any financial questions. Did you want to talk about the funding for it to cover the difference between the revenues and the costs? Yeah, it would be a transfer from the general fund. And I believe you said when you made that recommendation that you thought that that would be that the general fund expense, the general fund revenues would be able to handle that. Yes, that's correct. And you're still comfortable that that's the case? I'm still comfortable with that, obviously. There's still a lot of issues to be worked out between the parties. And obviously our goal as a staff is to make sure the city's interests are represented and that number is as small as possible, recognizing the need to be fair to all parties. But whatever, as long as the amount is within that range, I don't see any problem with the city meeting it. We are in very sound financial shape. I think as the council may recall when you met with the auditors in December, we have very healthy reserves, thankfully. And so when this finally does get resolved, the process for making whatever payments will be what? So I'm just trying to think about the process by where I know we'll approve the transfer of the funds, but will any payment of funds await our approval? Or will funds get expended and it will be a cleanup? No, basically the council, it would be an amendment to the budget. As we have done this before, basically that goes before the council, before any funds are moved. It's essentially an accounting transaction, but I think the council needs to be the one approving inter-fund transfers. Correct answer. Okay. If there's no other questions about the financial matters, I would like to kind of address some of the issues that are outstanding. I think Council Member Siemens raised one of the probably the more obvious and more critical. 
last Monday, I guess it was, by overnight mail, I did provide James F. Knott Construction with an updated punch list listing as well as an estimated valuation of those items. By contract, the city has the right to withhold 150 percent of the punch list valuation. And certainly if the council would like to see that, I could provide you with it. It's a fairly lengthy list. The majority of the items are relatively small in terms of their dollar value. Several of them are probably more significant. I would like to spend some time talking about one of the items that we were not in a position to assign a value to yet because we need to basically agree on a solution between the parties. It has to do with the issue Council Member Seamans just mentioned, which is the stormwater system. Several months ago, I believe it might have been in late November, early December, I sent a letter to James F. Knott Construction advising them that it was the city's position that we do not believe that the stormwater system was constructed 100 percent in compliance with the contract documents and basically asked them to basically propose a solution that would resolve that issue. They did propose an initial measure based on my conversations with the public works director and the city engineer. We did not, we basically told James F. Knott Construction not to proceed at that time because we did not feel that it was the appropriate solution. They subsequently have proposed another solution, which is basically in the process of being reviewed by our own city engineer as well as the civil engineer for the project. I will be having some discussions later this week with the project architect about that matter and then we'll be providing our response on the proposed solution to James F. Knott Construction. But until we actually have a sense of what the solution is, we could not really assign a value. This was noted in my transmittal letter to James F. Knott Construction about the punch list. So they knew that issue was still pending. Some other items that we have particularly raised concern with James F. Knott Construction about were some issues related to the flood balloon. They were on site, I believe it was last Thursday, to basically reinstall the balloon itself. There were some problems with that. Ms. George, our project manager, is following up on that, has already followed up with them and we are awaiting a rescheduled work date. The other item that is probably most visible has to do with the flooring in the public safety lobby. We, some time ago, basically advised James F. Knott Construction that we had concerns about a number of the cracks in the Fritz tile. As the council may recall, this has actually been an issue that's been talked about for some time. Initially, it appeared that there could be a reinstallation of the tile. As time went on and we had the opportunity to look at it more closely, we did notice some further cracks that have caused us some concern that the Fritz tile may not be the most appropriate material in that area. It is a material that basically, if you don't have an absolutely perfect, perfectly flat concrete slab, can be prone to some slight movement and cracking. Working with the contractor, we have suggested that perhaps another type of flooring material should be something that should be explored that basically would not be quite as subject to any kind of movement, specifically VCT. We were told that could be done, but the city would need to pay the cost of the materials. I then basically sent another communication to James F. Knott Construction indicating that that was not acceptable and that issue was essentially still being discussed between the parties and I have specifically asked for a response to my letter regarding that issue. I had sent them something on December 11th and we've not received a specific response. Some other items that we have previously talked to James F. Knott Construction about, which are not specifically punch list items, but were items that we have advised the contractor that we would be withholding monies for. The council may recall, and I believe it goes back to December of 2004, January of 2005, we experienced on at least two, I think two occasions during that time period where we did not have water service to the building because some lines were not properly insulated and the pipe froze. We basically had to incur some expense regarding the renting of portable toilets. We had a very large public meeting during one of those time periods and we had previously advised the contractor and reminded them of this last week 
that they would essentially be back charged for those rental charges. Um, similarly, during that time period, um, some of our library employees were unable to work. There was also some work that had to be done uh, relative to the electric, and there was no um, heat during the building. Um, it was not our employees' fault. They were paid. We have advised James F. Knott Construction um, that they would need to pay the salary and benefit cost of those employees who were unable to work during that time period back in 04 and 05. Uh, we also had um, around a little bit later during that time frame some water infiltration into the library. As some of the council members may recall that through the roof area. Um, our library director, Ellen Arnold Robbins, had provided me with um, any kind of financial costs that they incurred in getting records freeze-dried, and we've advised the contractor that they would basically need to reimburse the city for those costs as well. Um, so as you can probably tell from this, um, lots of issues that are, have been the subject of discussion. I have asked James F. Not Construction, have not yet received it, to provide me um, early this week with a schedule that outlines how they intend to complete the punch list and other unfinished work and that the city's expectation was that all outstanding work would be resolved within 30 days of their receipt of my letter. I think if we reach the point where that is not done, um, then I think I would like to have some closed, discussion, closed session discussions with the council um, and with our attorney, Bob Cox, to talk about how we move forward uh, if we're not getting some indication that things are going to be resolved. So have been, continue to be lots of issues relative to phase one, unfortunately. Um, I, I know this, this is not the appropriate place to discuss any potential legal issues, but I do want to say that I appreciate that you are being very um, tough with them about adhering to the contract and uh, not uh, essentially acceding to a number of their requests. So um, I just want people to know that uh, we are aware of that and right. we have been, the council has been very supportive of that approach on your part. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Porter. Um, Barb, I have a, a, a couple questions. One, I think, is um, relates to the work that we're doing as we're, we're planning a gymnasium. And uh, I hear your presentation tonight and realize how much uh, work you're putting into and have put into the community center project. And I'm just con uh, wondering whether uh, adding another project at this point is going to be something you're going to be able to do with the current staff level or whether you're uh, you know, we, we need to let the community center project uh, wind down a little bit more before we take on another construction project. No, and I, I appreciate that concern, Councilmember Siemens. I, I think when I compare sort of the phase one and phase two, it's sort of been night and day, quite frankly. Um, obviously, I, I came to the city about a year into the phase one uh, portion of the project. Um, and I think even at that juncture, the council's probably more aware of this than, than I was at the time. There certainly were a lot of issues that required attention. Um, you know, in terms of phase two, thankfully we've had a very amicable relationship with the contractor. Things um, have gone much more smoothly. And truthfully, other than you know, executing any change orders or a few things, quite frankly, it didn't take a lot of my time. Um, you know, I think. Whether or not the council chooses to go forward with the gym, I think, is a matter for the community and for the council. I think in terms of my own personal time, I think we've all learned a lot of lessons in terms of what works well, what doesn't, and I, I certainly would not envision spending um, you know, a, as much time as I probably have during my tenure on phase one. Yeah, I, uh, I certainly appreciate your comments because I think it's uh, clear that uh, the construction project during phase two under your uh, guidance and leadership was uh, uh, much less of a problem than we faced during phase one. But on the other side, um, I see that phase one still continues to take up a lot of your time to, to help get that resolved. And I'm just worried about uh, adding too much additional uh, on top of that. Um, I'd, I'd like to back up with financials. Sure. So one uh, quick question I had, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, again, as we look at the community, at the, uh, a gym project, uh, gymnasium project uh, potential, uh, I wonder if at some point we should be uh, separating the gymnasium expenses uh, and financial reports mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the 
community center financial reports? Again, that's more of a rhetorical question at no. this point. It's actually a good question, and truthfully, I kind of questioned myself when I was working on this last week of whether to put the expenses in or out. I think, um, you know, should the council choose to move forward, um, truthfully, it's, there, are, there are totally separate funding sources. Um, they really don't overlap in any way, and I think it would probably be, if I make two comments, one, there's probably no point to keep tracking them together, and my sincere hope is that in the near future, any financial report relative to phase one and phase two will become a moot point because we'll finally have those phases and all issues associated therewith resolved. Okay. Um, and then just two quick questions, um, and these are really coming from uh, community members. Kind of the most uh, frequently asked question I think that I get about the community center construction is uh, what's with the water that comes that seeps through the wall out front and is that something we should worry about or what's the answer to that? Um, there's obviously a lot of groundwater in this area. We have actually had the, um, the st a structural engineer and a civil engineer out to look at that um, and could certainly be happy to, I mean I think it was sort of a more of a you know, super full-blown report. Um, they did not indicate any significant concerns with that. Um, and, you know, some of it comes when we basically do some landscaping. We have, you know, tentatively explored are there some solutions, you know, that some material that we can put on the wall or something that might stop that seepage, but that's a little bit hard to do after it's constructed. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so the community, though, uh, can rest assured that it has been investigated. In yes and that it's not a, uh, a serious problem at this yeah. point. You know, I, I had the same concerns, quite frankly, so that's part of the reason, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a structural engineer actually come out and take a look at it. Okay. And then the other is more of a, an immediate question, and that is uh, considering that the um, you know, building was just completed not many months ago, uh, today the doors weren't working downstairs, and what was the problem with that? That would be the phase two uh, items if I could. I don't know if everyone's ready to move on. Are there some other questions about phase one? Bruce? I think Bruce would like to just have a couple things. Perhaps. Just two quick ones. Mm -hmm. um, on the uh, pending PCO list, mm -hmm. just a quick clarification on two items that aren't abundantly clear when looking at them. Uh, I'm assuming that 1143, it should be a uh, connection of trench drain to twin 72s. That is actually the way it's on uh, James F. Knott's report. I went back and looked at that. <laughs> I'm assuming they're talking about to the two six-foot pipes out front. I believe so, but like I said, I even went back and looked at it, and we usually just basically lift this directly from their own PCO okay. logs, so I agree with you. It's uh, kind of odd. <laughs> and, and I've come up with a number of interpretations of 1123 valley tubes. <laughs> that is part of, a, um, part of the roofing structure. Can get a little bit more information for you if you'd like. I hadn't gone to the roof. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about phase one items? Okay. Um, the remaining items generally for phase two, which would be the city's contract with TRJ Construction, is essentially the um, remaining work on the elevator. As uh, Council Member Siemens just alluded to, there are some, some door issues that we are still working on with TRG Construction. Um, I don't know the answer to your specific question, Councilmember Siemens, about the doors in question, but there, there are still some door issues that uh, TRG is working to resolve, um, and there are retainage monies that have been withheld uh, pending that work. Um, I know Ms. George has had a number of meetings both with TRG, our own internal staff, uh, on some of the programming, and there actually is a one or two subcontractors to TRG that actually work on door issues. Um, I can certainly ask her tomorrow, Councilmember Siemens, about your specific question. I apologize. I don't know the answer this evening. That's quite all right. Um, the, um, the other door issue, and, and I think you alluded to it, and that is the, uh, the locking and unlocking of doors <coughs> and the uh, computer system that uh, doesn't <laughs> seem to be running at this point at the, uh, at the desired level performance, That's whether it's the uh, designed level, I'm not sure. Is that, uh, you say that's still under? Uh... Yeah, there are still, um, there are some issues that need to be worked out with TRG. Um, there are some sort of internal things that I think uh, Ms. Hadevin is scheduled to give a report next week on the 
community center operations, and I believe that's one of the issues she may mention. Um, pending getting some of those issues resolved with TRG, um, we have been keeping those who can basically program the doors to a very small level. Um, obviously, our major focus is in getting the door issues resolved. Um, but there are still some, some training that we need to do with our staff in terms of, um, you know, setting up some of the internal systems and some of the programming is more of an internal city function, um, certainly working with some of TRG subcontractors. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, personally, I feel that needs uh, to be a higher priority, uh, higher just because it's not done yet, and I think it should yeah. be done soon. Yeah, I, I spoke to Ms. George about that earlier today, and um, certainly I can get a little bit more information for the council. I know it has been a... It's caused some operational problems, and obviously right. it's been a matter of concern for, for many of us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just uh, two quick ones. Okay. Um, a number of times when I've come into the building over the weekend, and again when I came in tonight, there was a, like an alarm beeping somewhere, and it seems to be a recurring issue. Definitely. Something needs to be reset. Yeah, actually, I, I mentioned that to Matt Corley of our recreation department. Um, if it's if the beeping is emanating from where I think it is, there are a number of panels in the building which generally are tied to um, to say some panic buttons that are in certain locations. Um, the one upstairs I know how to reset. I believe the sound did, was not coming from the upper level, so it appeared to be the panel that is in the public safety lobby, I asked Mr. Corley if he could please go down and talk to the dispatcher and see if someone could reset it. If not, I would stop by before the administrative function session and do it myself. Th th this weekend I was told that it's actually the ATM machine down there that's okay. beeping. Really? It <laughs> well, I, my assumption was the same as Councilmember Williams. It sounded like the, the panels um, that's, that are that's, in several that's locations. That's what I thought, Because so. yeah, I, I know there, there, that I've heard a panel up in the I'll call it the reception area up at the top of the stairs on the way to the administrative it, office. It sounded exactly the same to me as that beep. <laughs> right. so. And the other thing is um, status on signage, both exterior and interior. Yeah, that unfortunately has been something that had been a little bit delayed because of other staff workloads. Um, we have basically are probably within a day of finalizing the plan, it will then be put out to bid. So my hope is that those signs should be installed, hopefully maybe by the end of the fiscal year. Um, it's certainly dragged on. Well, normally the manufacturing process is, takes approximately two to three months, as I understand it. Uh, so. Those paper signs are getting really old. They're a little tacky, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Other questions? No. Uh, that's it for me, unless there's any other questions the council has. Are there other questions? Um, as we may have mentioned earlier, um, the council is concluding its business a little bit early uh, this time. We had another item which uh, we were not able to schedule, and rather than trying to do something at the last minute, we decided to give the city clerk and the assistant city clerk a break because they are uh, preparing for the election this evening. So we are going to adjourn and go into our administrative function session purpose of the administrative function session will be to um, begin the city attorney's evaluation. If there's nothing else, we're adjourned. <laughs>